Welcome YouTubers. Exciting video today. I want you to imagine, 1956, a little lady walks into a recording studio. Was it 1956? I'm hopeless at that, that's why I don't usually do the history side. My brain just doesn't retain it. But anyway, around that time, a woman by the name of Sparklemore walks into a studio. You can imagine back then, she probably would have copped a little bit of the, hello little lady, we've got musicians here, you just sing and do your thing. And she said, no, I'm gonna play. And this is what she did. Check this out. Introducing Sparkle More, folks. You take a rock and a bop when it's really neat And you put them together with the rock a bop beat A head and toe, a head and toe You're gonna do the rock a bop A rock a bop, you're gonna swing it You'll play it in the rhythm Have a stop, stop A rock a bop, I said a rock a bop A rock a bop, I said a rock a bop With me, come on and rock a bop So as you can see, some ripping guitar playing. Now, in my opinion, having studied a lot of these guys, as you guys know, as you folks know, I should say, I, I think her playing is up there with Cliff Gallops. And I'll tell you why. There is a sophistication to some of these licks. You're going to see later in the tutorial, this particular lick here. I mean, oh my god. That one, that particular lick made me have to do that take about a hundred times because every time I got to it, it just... It's almost bebop, you know, um, and the only the only guy that I thought in the rockabilly circle that was really on, on that edge was pretty much Cliff Gallup. You know, he was right up there. I think she was too. So really a very underrated guitar player and not very known. And one of the coolest things which I wanted to say was uh, this little quote from this magazine. So I discovered her in this mag... Stuff falling everywhere. I discovered her in this magazine in 2019. Okay, I picked it up, thought that looks really cool. Good read, bought that. This particular quote here is why I really respect Barbara Morgan is actually her real name. And I believe she's still alive. I'll have to find, have to check that out. Maybe we can find her. Uh, where is it? So it says here, I don't know where the idea came from that unless you are seeking fame and fortune through commercial labels, you are not producing music or can, cannot be satisfied with it. How much better does that make you feel about just enjoying music at home and not having to be famous or be someone? You know, to me, I think that's a really awesome quote. And uh, she she left the music industry to have some kids and um, she ended up working in computers. And um, she even mentions in there about, you know, she wasn't going to leave her children to satisfy her ego, something along those lines. And I just applaud that. So really awesome means uh, to me there's a i just think it's really cool I, I really align with that i like being at home anyway as you guys know son wife very happy so let's get into the lesson i hope you've enjoyed just a little bit of a side story to this one i know it's normally um straight in get to work but um just lastly before we do just quickly want to thank my latest patreons philip dennis broder back alley minion and <laughs> back alley minion sound like i said aluminium and sean polden 
Dennis Broder, thanks for all the comments too. You're on, you're on to every video at the moment. I really appreciate that. All right, guys, let's get to work. Um, it's also my birthday, so you could always just wish me happy birthday when you watch this video. And thanks to my sister Nicole for this awesome cap that she bought me. It's really lovely. Her and Trevor and Edward, thanks guys, really appreciate it. Let's go. So first chord, E. You surely you know how to play an E chord. So open, second, second, first, open, open, just in case you don't. We strum that once. We strum it again. And then we start this riff. And even the sophistication in this little riff, it's just a... It's sweet, check this out. So we play open, open on the sixth string. And we need to do that down, up, okay? So down, up, pick down on the third fret, up on the fourth fret. So down, up, down, up. Then we play the second fret on the fifth string. We go up to the fourth fret on the sixth. We roll our third finger to the fourth on the fifth string. And then we play the second fret. So that's our first boogie kind of riff. Two, four, roll, two, and we start again. Okay, that's tricky. You make uh, need to make sure you're alternating throughout or you're gonna find that very difficult. It's probably quite hard to play all down. Just won't work. She had a very relaxed style and a very efficient method. She was obviously a really good player. So the cool thing is we do that for two bars in bars three and four. Well, we do it for bars three and four, that is two bars. Then we go to bar five, we do the same thing, but we move it across to the fifth string, so. So exactly the same thing, okay? And again, alternating down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And it means you come from the fourth string up to the fifth string when you go back to that fourth fret. Same with the previous one. Okay, it's gonna feel awkward to begin with, but it will help if you practice that slow build up the speed. We return in bar seven, back to the E riff. And then we do this little B7 chord, seventh fret here, seventh fret on the fourth string, eighth fret on the third string, just like that. So it's a jazz voicing basically, a little shell voicing. Just like that, so we, we strum, strum again, slide it back two frets, strum it again. And then uh, we do this, you know, Carl Perkins-esque rockabilly strumming type riff. I say Carl Perkins because it feels like it was definitely done just with the flat pick. Um, I'm actually using the Black, Black Mountain pick at the moment as, as a regular pick. I've become really, um, become quite comfortable with them. Just uh, become a bit of a go-to, which is really cool. More on that later. But um, what you do here is pick down up, just like that. So we go down up on the sixth string. And when we strum through an E chord now, sort of from roughly the fourth string, Put your pinky down on the second string, like that. So we go down, up, strum with the pinky down on the second string, up on the first, lift your pinky, up, put your pinky back as you strum down, and then head back to your zeros here and lift that pinky, and you'll sort of get a little bit of a... See that, I'm sort of, sort of loosely strumming. Up, down, up, start again. All right, that's bars 11 and 12. It was bar nine in which we played the B7, slid to the A7 in bar 10, and then we had this riff. And we're back to our boogie riff. So you can see, just in the first verse coming into the, into the chorus, there's already a, a series of rockabilly staples happening, and they're all played really nicely and there's a uniformity to her playing you know when she plays a section she nails it repeats it the same way very good player very clean player uh, so we're back to the E riff for the chorus moves across to the A this is bar 17 19 same things before And you can, that same riff, uh, I think it's the same, I'll just double check. Uh, da, da. Exactly the same as before, the, the, the nice strummy E riff um, appears again. So nothing really changed in the chorus from the verse. Um, yeah, so it was bar 23 that we did that. And the reason I mentioned bar 23 there is because we're about to head into the first guitar solo. 
didn't take long, did it? It's pretty cool. So after we do bar 24, finish up on that first string, and on beat four of bar 24, so it's like one and two and three, four and starts a little early, sets it up. So this is the solo now. Okay, we go down, up, down. We're into bar 25. Uh, so we've picked the open string. I'll do that one more time. Four and one. Fourth fret on the sixth string. Second fret on the fifth string. Then we go four, two. So. I should always play it first so you know what you're actually doing. Um, but anyway, you, you've got that now. It's not overly complicated. Oh, four, two, four. And make sure you go up on the fourth because we did that a little quicker. Four, two. We're into bar 26 now. Um, after you've hit that two, we hit head to the fifth fret, and we I do this with an upstroke as well. So the lick go the next lick goes. So what I do is I pick up on the fifth string, uh, fifth fret, sorry, fourth string. That's a G into a G sharp. Four, C sharp, four or six, six four. Then this time we go to the seven, seven four six four. Okay, uh, this is in the key of E. I didn't talk about any of the theory for this song uh, so far. It's just a blues in E, nothing too complicated. We're working obviously with an E and A, a little bit around a B7, uh, but for the most part, this is kind of like an E. Again, E Mixolydian. I talked about this in some of my recent videos, so. Um, Check out my Theory for Rockabilly playlist. As you get more towards the bottom, it becomes more and more Rockabilly-based. Initially, it's very much just theory. Uh, and I talk a lot about the Mixolydian, Major Pentatonic, and the Minor Third. Okay, those kinds of things. Really, really useful. It's really what's happening here. So, um, what we've got so far... Okay, so we go to the... That's the flat seven there. D natural. Okay, so that's bar 27. At the end of bar 27, we play 7, 5. So then we, we roll into the 6 at the beginning of bar 28. So. Finger slipped. So everything I just played then, uh, I play in bar 27, we play the 7, 5, upstroke on that, roll to the 6, we, we basically miss the downstroke, okay, because we're not playing on that note, we're just hammering it on, so pick up on the on this one, 4, 6, up on the 5, 7, 5, 7, bend, let it down, 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 5, 6, 4, 5, 5, slide from 7 to 9, 7, 9, and then slide 9 to 10, then play 7, 9, 7, okay, so I'll just play everything in the solo so far, Alright, so if you if you uh, you know obviously go back and watch me walk you through that a few times, and see if you can play along with what I just did at a nice slow speed. One of the great things about learning solos is even if you never nail the speed, you're getting a lot of experience with scales and ideas and concepts that that guitar player probably worked really hard on. Whether it was by ear, you know whether they just learnt heaps of stuff, uh, or whether they were really educated. Either way, you get to kind of absorb that. You know, so learning solos, it's like eating people's superpowers, eating their superpowers, you know, like absorbing their superpowers. So if you do a lot of that and then educate yourself on what you like, that's how you can become a good player, I guess. So for the last part of the first solo, because there's a second one, which is great, we're sliding from the seven and the six. This is 32 into 33. We go down. Uh, yeah, so we've got the seven and the six, and I'm barring my first finger to get the seven on the first string as well. So I go like that. Slide up, put your third finger down, and add your third finger to the ninth fret. So, and then we strum, letting that third finger up. So, 
we repeat the exact same thing two frets back. So slide from the five and four and barring. Just like that. <clears throat> that's it. That's that's the last part of the solo. Uh, we get this lick to come out, this sort of chord lick. So. So that little riff there, bar 35, strum down on 6, 5, and 4, up, then up again, then up again, 2, O, oh, so we went, O, oh, O, oh, 2, O, oh, down, up on the open first string, down on the second fret of the second string, open, and then up on the open, down, and then strum an E, okay? so. Okay, that's taken us to a verse now. So everything that happens here, you've already played most of it, except the next solo. The only difference here with the verse, so instead of going straight to the boogie riff pattern, we do the, the chord riff lick thing that we just did in bar 35 and 36, we do it again in bar 39 and 40. So, same riff, watch. Then we go back to the boogie pattern. We've already done all this. Do that little chord riff at the end. I might have played it slightly different then. Got about 50 million different variations of that floating around my head at any one time when I'm playing Rockabilly. So, uh does another chorus exactly the same as the previous choruses. Uh, yeah, sorry, I did the... Yeah. Chorus. It's bar 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Exactly the same. All right, so now we get to the second solo. And that goes like this. Take your first finger, slide from as brave, uh, as far back as you're brave. So that's 12, 12 and 12. And then on the third and second string, 13 and 14, then 12 and 12. We do this rib again, but this time, we do an extra strum basically. So we do one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Okay, so it was 14 and 15. Three, four. And then we do this really cool lick. So we keep kind of repeating this. It's the 14 and the 15. Uh, and what I'll do here, down, up, down, 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 down. There's a real specific rhythm to this. I'm just going to play it for you really slow. So, All right, and then we get this killer, killer lick. All right, so it was just alternating between a slightly bent 14 and 15. Now, a really good tip if you're having trouble with these kind of really phrased rhythms and what i mean by that is that they're not just a sort of a simple rhythm there's something about them you know that's quite catchy almost get it in your head sing it you know if you can sing that you can string it i think the saying is if you can hum it you can strum it so after you do that i'm going to play it one more time This killer lick. This lick, it still blows me away. 67, bar 67. 15, pick down, follow the picking, make sure you keep alternating, okay? Pick, uh, I'm just gonna alternate, you can follow that, I'll tell you the fret. So 15, 12, 14 on the third string, 14 on the fourth string, 12 on the third, 14 on the third, 15 on the third, 12 on the second, 15 on the third, 14 on the third, 12 on the third, 13 on the third, 14 on the 4, 11. Now, there's some crazy cool stuff going on here. It's pentatonic blues at the beginning. 
straight blue scale, but on the way back, uh, wait, wait, so 15 blues, 14, okay, 12, now we do the major third, we sort of switch into like an E major pentatonic, so that's the G sharp, major third, not in the minor blues, we've now switched to like a major, okay, so minor blues, still minor blues, minor, major, 14, and then the major six. Okay, that beautiful major six. All right, you can make scales out of these ideas really quickly. You know, if you took a, a, a minor scale, added the major third, very rockabilly, add the six as well, start getting, that's the sound, you know. Um, I've talked about it in so many videos, I could make a million videos about it, I reckon. It's just um, because there's so many ways to vary it, and it's so cool. Anyhow, that's that really cool lick. What happens after that? Uh, we do the the chords would be B and then A7, and the, the licks follow. So it does this B kind of arpeggio. So 9 on the 4th, that's a B. D to D sharp, so again, minor 3rd to major 3rd against a B. Roll in, it's B, 7th fret, then 7th on the 2nd, 8th fret on the 3rd. Roll from 5 to 6, 5 on the 2nd, 5 on the 1st, then 5, 7, 5, 8, 7, 7, 5, 6, 5, okay? Alright, so after we do that 5, 6, 5, 5, 5, 7, 5, 8, 7, and sort of relax the note. So you get that staccato, uh, uh. then we go 7, 5, 6, 5. Five, five, seven, slide to nine. Do that quicker. Like that. Seven, nine. Do the twelves here. Okay, we're back to verse territory here. Nothing new. All right, so we strum the. Uh, have I missed one? No, so we do this. Then we're one regular E. And this is bar 74. 75, we're back to the boogie pattern. Okay, it's all the same. Does the bam, 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 bam. Uh, does that rockabilly rhythm? Do a chorus with the boogie pattern. All the same, guys. Nothing changes. I'll just play through it so you can see the end. Sorry, I lost the page. I'll scroll down. Then we're B seven. And that's the end. Even the end is perfect. I mean, so much of that rockabilly stuff, it's like the guys just went in there and went, yeah, that'll do. I get the feeling someone in her session, probably her, wanted it right. And if I was to go by her guitar playing, which was right, just always right, it's just so good, I reckon she probably orchestrated that and said, this is how we're going to end it. Okay, so what happens? Strum that. Strum. Now, we do the down, up on the six, strum, with the pinky down. Up on the first, lift the second, down, uh, up, down, add the second back, and then you sort of wait, I guess, and you go down on the on the E chord, but from the fourth string, and then just hit the sixth string. So just that little pause, and and that's it. That's the whole song. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you see that this is something, or am I just making a big deal um, about it? I don't think so. Um, I've had a really good look at a lot of this stuff, and this is one of the coolest guitar. I, me I remember hearing it after reading the magazine. I checked out, uh, it, there was a women in rockabilly section, and when I checked out these articles, I, I had to listen to all of them, but the fact that um, Sparkle Moore or Barbara Morgan played her own guitar and did such a good job of it in a time where I think it was just, I don't know whether not a lot of women were playing guitar, uh, it's still fairly underrepresented, uh, but to just yeah blow it away like that um, in in I'm not going to get political let, let, I'm just impressed and it's fantastic and um, yeah it's really cool so go check out Sparkle More there's some other great stuff and uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial don't forget to check out the Patreon check out my other videos check out the Theory for Rockabilly check out everything and um, grab a t -shirt. I do that I do that a lot now I hit the mic grab a t-shirt if you like them it's got a duo jet on it I think that's pretty cool and um, yeah catch you guys in the next video